Hey guys, Micah here from ebikeschool.com. Today I'm going to be doing a review of the Xiaomi M365 scooter. Now this is not a sponsored review or anything. I actually went out and bought this scooter after writing an article last week for Electric about how this specific model of scooter has basically been taking over the streets of California. So I wanted to uh, get this scooter after writing about it and just try it out because it seemed like a lot of fun. And uh, now since I've had it, I've been riding it around for about a week, I want to share my thoughts with you guys. And since I'm sure you guys are tired of seeing me ride a bunch of electric vehicles around all the time, my lovely wife has agreed to stand in as a test driver for part of this video. Wave high. The Xiaomi M365 scooter is definitely more than just a toy. I found it to be nearly as capable as an electric bicycle for most commuting and also just fun cruising trips. Now this is my first electric scooter and I wasn't sure how I'd feel about standing versus sitting like on my electric bicycle, but uh, you know I kind of like standing up as a nice change of pace compared to the e-bike. It also makes it sort of easy to carve back and forth and have a little more fun than on a normal ride. Now unlike many e-bikes with throttles, which they can start from a stop just like a motorcycle, the Xiaomi M365 scooter requires that you first kick off before you can apply the throttle. This took a little while to get used to, and sometimes I wouldn't give it enough of a kick and the throttle wouldn't engage, so I'd have to give it a second stronger kick. And one other odd thing I did notice after a while was that the steering column only turns about 45 degrees to either side. Now that's plenty for riding, and I can definitely do, you know, nice tight circles, but it wasn't quite enough for maneuvering the scooter indoors. And if I'm pushing it down a hallway, I sometimes would have to lift up the front end to turn it a little more sharply. The 8.5 inch airfield tires were great at absorbing small bumps in the road, and they were even decent when riding over brick and boardwalks as well. But on cobblestones, the lack of suspension was quite noticeable, and it can actually get a little annoying after a while. But the scooter rides really well on smooth streets and sidewalks, and it really absorbs bumps easily on those types of trains. The handlebars are quite short end to end, but I didn't find them uncomfortable. Also, the fact that they're so narrow means that you can really easily slip between cars and pass people on bike lanes without a problem like you might have on uh, wide handlebars on an e-bike. The thumb throttle is also really well designed, and I didn't feel like I had any thumb fatigue like I sometimes do with certain electric bicycle throttles. The base of the scooter is also somewhat narrow, though Xiaomi markets it as wide enough to fit two feet on it side by side. While I did succeed to do this, it felt a bit strange riding it that way. And I prefer to ride the scooter the same way I ride my electric longboard, with my front foot pointed forward and my rear foot pointed perpendicular to the base. This position just feels a lot more comfortable and stable to me. The front direct drive hub motor is listed as 250 watts, but it can reach peaks of up to 500 watts according to Xiaomi, which I believe because it feels like a lot more power than just 250 watts, and it had decent but not amazing acceleration off the line. It's probably the small diameter wheels that help it get that good acceleration with just a 250 watt continuous 500 watt peak motor. I did most of my initial riding on flat ground, where the scooter performed great, but I was a bit worried about hills. Though it turns out the scooter actually handled mild hills really well, though I only weigh 150 pounds, or about 68 kilos. And also Tel Aviv doesn't have huge hills for me to really torture test the scooter on. Now Xiaomi claims that the scooter is capable of 18 miles, or 30 kilometers of range. In my testing, which did include some small hills, I never surpassed more than 27 kilometers of range. Now perhaps you'd get that full 30 kilometers of range if you were on entirely flat terrain, but 27 kilometers is still great for such a small scooter with not that big of a battery pack. Considering the low $499 price of this scooter, the build quality is actually really nice. The steel frame feels very sturdy, and it folds really easily, and the locking mechanism doesn't move or bend or creak. The throttle, wheels, brakes, and lights, and everything just feels really well built and nicely integrated. Basically, it doesn't feel like a kick scooter with an added motor. It feels like it was a well-built, purpose-made electric scooter. The one thing I still don't like as much about a stand-up scooter like this in general is that I can't use my hands to carry anything, since I need one hand on the left for the brake and one hand on the right for the throttle. With my e-bike, I can control the throttle and brake with my right hand, leaving my left hand free to carry things. And on my electric skateboard, I have both hands free, which actually came in handy because after filming this review, we rode around for a while until it got dark and then decided to pick up some pizza on the way home but since my wife was on the scooter, that meant I was carrying the pizza on my skateboard. Basically, in summary, I didn't really expect to have as much fun on this scooter as I did, but it was really a blast to ride. I think it could be an excellent car or bus replacement for many people that live in a city where traffic doesn't often reach speeds higher than about 20 miles an hour or 32 kilometers an hour, or that have good bicycle lane infrastructure in place already. I think my single largest complaint would probably be the lower top speed of this scooter, limited to just 15 and a half miles an hour, or 25 kilometers an hour. I'm used to riding an e-bike that travels nearly twice as fast as that, so I found myself reaching top speed and longing for more, basically. 
If you'd like to get your own Xiaomi M365 scooter, make sure you check out the links below this video to find the official sellers for the scooter in the US and internationally. All right, so I hope you guys found that review interesting and also helpful if you've been considering getting the Xiaomi M365 scooter. Thank you all for watching. Last but not least, it's time to announce the winner of the ebikeschool.com book giveaway from my last video. And the winner is... Clowny MB. So congratulations, and uh, thanks for commenting. Let me know where to send your book in a private message. And anyone else wants to win a copy of one of my books, either DIY Lithium Batteries, DIY Solar Power, or the Ultimate Do-It-Yourself E-Bike Guide, all you have to do to enter is put a comment in this video, and I will randomly select one of the comments at the end of my next video to win one of these books. All right, thanks for watching, guys, and see you next time.